Hello, friends, and welcome again to another Street Fighter Duel video. Hey, guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year to all of you. I wish you and hope for you. All your wishes and dreams and hopes come through to you and your families and your loved ones, and it will be full of joy and happiness. Now, we got an update, massive update to the game, and we got a lot of events going on at the same time. First of all, we got uh, Effigy Clash, with the, which they reduced the teams to three teams, the number of teams that required to go and do this, which is better and will give you high scores, which is good actually to the game, and this is a good actually approach. Other than that, they gave you, or they lowered the powers of the towers now that you can go to the towers and achieve more and more and get more rewards. As you see, Supreme Fist, I'm not stuck, but I stopped here because I don't want to progress more. Let me remove this and add somebody else. Lower the... Yeah, so 49 million, I can't progress. So the ceiling is 50 million at the stage of 534 in the tower. And it's a little bit annoying, but achievable, and you can do it after that. And the rewards are decent, actually, because you're going to accumulate a lot of EX summons. And this is what happened to me. If we check, you get EX summons. I have 136 tickets. Spend them wisely, save a little bit for the future, maybe the banner of uh, Virtual EX will come back and you will need it a lot if you don't have it right now. If you don't have Kami and Virgil EX, go for it, it's very helpful and needed in many situations. Other than that, also the Grandmaster Tower or the Master Tower, I did it, I can't do it more, I did it on auto, not manual. This is how uh, good they did it, how much they lowered the power that you need to do it actually. Let me show you my lineup that I've been using. And it's really not that built so it's basically SS plus and at SS you can achieve it at S some units can achieve it so you need to go and progress with that it will give you some divination tickets also will give you scrolls for EX to summon as well as the flame tower I can't do more than 20 which will give you a lot of space to do content and play a little bit of the game in the future which is really good which go all the way for all the towers now, the major thing is the addition of the Legendary Tower. Now, the Legendary Tower, there's bad news and good news about it. Good news, it opens for people that have more than three Legendary. As you see, I can't go in as free to play because I have only one Legendary. I'm cool with that. I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with how they treated the spenders in this game. So, if you're a spender, if you got another Legendary, let's say, we all know that we go only for one Legendary, which means a lot and is the meta and changes the, your account and how you progress in events and fight against other players and rank a lot which is flame chun so if you bought flame chun and you are supporting this game paying money two dollar one dollar five dollars every month let's say every week or daily but you can't afford to go and buy with the fifty dollars if on fifty percent price tag uh, for the unit in USD dollars of course in different regions it costs a little bit more or a little bit uh, less depending where you're at you can't go and do this tower, which is absolutely crazy to me. Why would you do something like that? This is how you reward your customers that are paying for this game. This is very bad. I think they should remove this three units a cap and keep it at one unit or two units at least. So they reward them. Because if you're being spending, this is now capped at $100, 150% or at $200. If you're not lucky enough, of course, to get uh, Flame Chun for $30. They're speaking numbers, it's not pay to win, it's pay to play now. It, it is uh, closed, only your entry, your ticket is to buy two legendary units on 50%. This is how they're pushing you to buy more units. I don't know, I think it's a bad approach. As free to play, it doesn't affect me as they need uh, legendary units and legendary units are obtained only by purchase from the mall. And this is what the community, previous community manager told me and what they told him, there were no way on earth they were gonna release a new legendary units for free to play i hope they will do that i will make a major apology for them if they do in the future a legendary free to play players maybe they change it by dino he's he left as a community manager and somebody else took in maybe they changed their plans just like they changed the 50 divination summons they gave us evidence they did not evidence they told us straight up yakuza ken is the new 50 percent divination character they dropped him into the game dino left and they made changes because they didn't want some leaks and some info going out and they wanted to change the plans so they keep it as much inside the company as possible so they gave us balrog now this video is about breaking down balrog and all of his kit am i happy with him with the, how did they gave us him and the skills that they have no i'm not 
he's a representation of Mike Tyson, let's say, and he's one of the characters that I like and I was anticipating. Of course, I like the 50% divination, it's half the price. I mean, everybody likes half the price of anything, but how they gave us it with the character that is niche. He's not that good, he's not that useful. You can use him in some scenarios, but he's not the breaking point of the game or could be helpful. He's a skippable, 100% skippable. But if you're free to play like me, and or you low spender and you're like me stuck here in the in the limit break in your uh momentum level two more levels i can't level up anybody anymore i need more units to go to triple s as you see i have many units that are still waiting to go there and he's my my way in actually because it's 50 percent and i'm gonna summon a lot i have saved a lot of tickets to break and give me five more levels of course, you can do it without it, you can go and spend on other units without the 50% divination, summon for somebody like really good, like Trendy Kami, somebody like Trendy, Trendy Dalsim. But my, in my opinion, it's worth it, the resources are good. Last time they did the divination, they gave us a cool character, which is Witch Jewry, and I got 11 levels out of it, and I got to make 4 characters of mine to FS plus 30, which is the main important units, like FS plus 30, like here. So this was really good for me the the 50 percent divination on which jury was really nice she's really handy she's a must-have on assist for uh people like me or free to play or low spenders for whales it doesn't matter they can play better units uh, that would help them with their synergies but as free to play or low spenders she was good she's still good i use her sometimes as damage dealer on some lineups which is really good she ca came in as 50 percent divination everybody were happy with the summons they got her they got some resources which is really good and push them with their accounts for balrog i don't think it's the best idea that they did to give him as as niche as this because i'm gonna explain his kit right now let's go and check what balrog have to offer for us and he's infernal balance character He's not a tank, he's a balance, you can give him the gears, and he's power, you can give him the gears of Bison or Gormagala Ken, or something like that. Let's be talking about him, first of all. So his super, he's a single target damage dealer. What he does, he, he charge up and throw a straight punch that strikes the nearest enemy three times, dealing damage equal to 602% of attack. Also inflict additional damage equal to 33% of HP lost by this fighter, by him, capped at 900% of attack. So he deals damage and the more that he gets lower on health, the more that he deals damage. Who does this? Mad Ryu. Mad Ryu does the same kit and this is why I was sad because it didn't work with Mad Ryu. Even with all the mitigation and healing, it's still bad. Imagine like having him starting a combo but he's not losing HP. His damage would not be that good. He needs to take a lot of damage. In bossing, you will take the maximum damage at the end of the fight, not at the start of the fight. So the last couple of hits will maybe uh, buffed a little bit with attack this is why it's not that recommended and it's single target in campaign he might help you with other of his kit and i'll be talking about what kit i'm talking about especially with viper and goken or any other shielder other than suit able and normal able so increases additional damage to 54 then to 75 percent and capped at 900 of attack just increases in bonuses his passive and his passive this is why I'm, I'm sad because of his passive, because it could offer even more if they added additional stuff that could trigger or do something else. So gain 20% damage reduction upon entering the battle, which is good actually, but every 1 HP lost gain additional 0.4 damage reduction. So every time you lose some certain type of HP, or it goes up to 0.7. So the ratio is for every 1% HP, 0.7 HP, so 10% 10, 10 HP lost, 7% damage reduction. Not the best in the world, it's okay for survivability, it doesn't give the entire team, it has only for him so he can survive, which is, I find it really niche and not helpful for the team. We want a team synergy, not a solo player again. So his C1, ram the nearest target enemy or enemy two times, dealing damage equal to 315% of attack, after unleashing this skill, gain a shield equal to 25% of lost HP and in the end also grant all ally fighters a shield uh, equal to 20% of the HP lost by the fighter and him it goes for 40%. So he gains a shield for 40% of his lost HP and he gives the other allies 20% uh, of his lost HP, a big shield, which is for 10 seconds only, it, it fades away. I wish they didn't put the 10 seconds, I wish that it was permanent and you can remove it by damage this will be helpful to the team 
Okay, again, this fighter for now seems very niche, not good. I'll be because I'm so sad about this because I'm a big fan of this fighter and I wanted him to be good and useful in the meta. Not to be the meta, but useful that you can substitute with somebody else. His C2. Throw a hook punch that strikes the nearest enemy four times, dealing damage equal to 534% of attack, while unleashing this skill gain damage bonus equal to 70% of this fighter's current damage reduction. So the more his passive grows and the more reduction he goes, it means the more HP he loses, the more damage he does. Again, it didn't work with Mad Ryu, I wonder if it would work with him. And, or if Mad Ryu and him could be meta, but I don't see that. I will try this because I'm gonna max him, I'm gonna summon for him. So, level 2, increase the damage by 615 of attack, increase the damage bonus to 100% of the fighter's current damage reduction. So, if he has 70% damage reduction, 100% of the 70% will be inflicted as damage, which is okay. I don't find it that helpful, but what could we do? So, his FS. Okay, it's not the best in the world, but it's okay. It will enable him not to get interrupted or stunned. So... Boxing King, when HP falls below 40% the first time, only the first time, he gains super armor for 15 seconds. So he can continue doing his attacks. Not the best, really not the best. It's only the unlock, so it's okay. An additional skill when you unlock him. So his assist. Grant the assisted fighter 10% damage reduction at the start of the battle. Okay, that's good. For every 1% HP lost by the assisted fighter, they gain 0.2 damage reduction. It means for every 10%, they gain 2%, which will get them more and more to have sustainability in the fight. It's okay, also not a must-have, not the best thing, but it's fine. When HP falls below 40% at the first time, gain super power. No, it's 40%, so it was saying, yeah, it's still 40%. Increase attack by 20% and effect resistance by 50%. Last 15 seconds. Last only 15 seconds. So effect resistance, it means he can't get debuffs or get stunned. And he gains 20% uh, more attack. 20% of the total attack of his skill, his initial skill. So, again, how does he gain this? With reducing his HP so he can trigger that. The best point you want him at is plus 20, no more. So we're gonna speak about his plus 20 when HP falls below 60%. Now it's even more. So if it's 60%, it's better than the 40%. Increase attack by 30% and effect resistance by 80% last 15 seconds. Also, I wish they don't put the 15 seconds here. It will be nice if he will be immortal on the team because it's a really good synergy. Now, why for you want him at 60%, not 40%? If you're playing against an enemy, uh, DiCapri, at 40%, she can just one-shot him and that's it. Or you get him to plus 20 or plus 30. Plus 30, he will gain immunity for one second. So after unleashing a combo or super combo, Balrog will take damage on behalf of his friendly fighters. So he will have damage sharing just like E-Honda skill. E-Honda passive skill. E-Honda the free-to-play unit. Thunder unit. Let's be let's talk about it a little bit. So take damage on behalf of friendly fighters with the lowest HP percentage for 10 seconds. If Balrog receives fatal damage while damage sharing is active, he gains damage immunity for one second, recovers 20% of lost HP, and ends the damage sharing effect. Damage sharing trigger every 15 seconds. So you have to tr you can trigger it multiple times. So it's just like E Honda. E Honda, but I think it's for 30 seconds or something like that, or maybe less. I could check later. So what happens is he drops on HP. He wanna die, but he triggers immunity, so he doesn't die. Who kills him through immunity? Zangief, even Ryu. So there is ways to bypass this as well. So this is why he's not highly recommended and his plus 30, I think it's not even needed because it's a passive that we already have in the game for E Honda, which is free to play. You need to invest for him for 30. FS, 30 FS, it's a hard investment, especially if you're free to play or low spender. That's a harsh investment to get him to plus 30, just for him to survive for one second. Gains immunity for one second and start regenerating. So it means if they hit you with a super combo and he wanna die, he will stay alive, the C1 will kill him. That's what you can get. Plus the shields and the damage reduction that he gets, if something pierces through immunity or shields like soul damage, he will die. This is why it's so niche and I think that they did really not the best job doing him now his scars for every one hp lost increase the strength of incoming shield effects by 0.5 incoming shield effects not just by him but by any shielder like if you're playing summer yang if you're playing goken or if you proc the shields of viper which are one of the best scenarios with him because he will buff those shields and give you survivability and you can achieve more and more and gives you time to heal 
with EX or with different characters. His 6 out of 6, for every 1 HP lost, increase crit rate by 0.5 and crit damage by 1%. I will test this, I will get him to 6 stars. It doesn't seem that good, but I will test it just for testing purposes. I will take him to 6 out of 6 and I will test him specifically with Viper. Why with Viper? Viper, when she goes below 40% HP, she gets this thick shield that will improve the damage, that will buff her and save her, and she will deal extra damage. With her, I think he works the best. With Gokin also he works good. And with any shielder, except Able and Suit Able, because they have shields of instances of damage, but not according to HP, attack, or defense. And yeah, that was it about uh, Balrog. All you need to know about Balrog. I will be testing him, I will summon for him in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, that was it for the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, we thank you for watching. And as always, stay frosty. Peace. Time to fight. Time to fight.